There's been a lot of discussion about central bank digital currency this week. Listen to this. Instead of carrying your wallet in your back pocket or your purse, a tech company wants you to keep it under your skin. So this is an Orwellian dystopia of total control, the end of any freedoms. That's um, really what central banks are aiming at. Several central banks have, like the Bank of England, already prepared their microchip implant RFID chip to be implanted under your skin. Soon you will be able to pay for groceries at every Whole Foods in the U.S. with just a swipe of your hand. The biblical prophecies of the end of times outline a world that looks much different to the world we're living in today. With the passage of time and how everything is evolving in the world today, we can see pretty clearly how that end goal will be met eventually. The mark of the beast, signs of the sun, moon and stars, and the distress of the nations. These are one of those few signs that are day by day getting more of a glimpse of how everything is going to be near the end of times and how those times may not be that far off. The unfolding of the Mark of the Beast, nowadays technology and the world's systems that will be introduced to the world for its implementation is clearly getting set up more and more with each passing day. In the clip at the beginning of the video, you can see Professor Richard Werner. He's a German economist and also chosen by the World Economic Forum in 2003 to be global leader. Mentioned that various banks are now looking for systems where they can implant different CBDCs right inside your skin. But what was already ready around 2015 is the ultimate goal, what they really want. Apparently, I was told by a central banker is, you know, CBDC looks like a small grain of rice that they want to put under your skin, which is, in my view, a violation of human dignity. And they realize there is a hurdle. So <laughs> to, get people, to get people to accept this, there will be, you know, why, why suddenly are all the billionaires saying, let's have universal basic income? It's not something new for us to have an idea of this technology where the body or the skin is not involved. This kind of technology is being implemented and pushed onto society and the people in so many different ways. Recently, Amazon and others are adopting new ways that lets you pay using the palm of your hand. Soon you will be able to pay for groceries at every Whole Foods in the US with just a swipe of your hand. Amazon says that the pay by palm technology will be at all of those stores nationwide by the end of the year. Customers just have to hover their hand over the device to pay. This method is already being used at 200 Whole Foods locations across 20 states, and you can also find it in other places, stores like Panera Bread. Not only this, but several other technological implementations, for example in China and Portland, where a type of facial recognition system is being introduced, where the recognition of your face is much more important than whatever you want to. Now, all of these things, which are implemented together, are eventually pointing towards one aim that is capable of setting the stage for the mark of the beast, that no one would be able to buy or sell anything without having this mark on their hand or in their head. Heads up shoppers, high prices may not be the only thing you have to worry about at the supermarket. Someone could be watching you. Oh boy, there's a new movement to use facial recognition in stores for security and it's not without controversy, as you can imagine. Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 through 11. A third angel followed them and said in a loud voice, If anyone worships this beast and its image and receives the mark on their forehead or on their hand, they too will drink the wine of God's fury, which has been poured full strength into the cup of his wrath. They will be tormented with burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and of the Lamb and the smoke of their torment will rise forever and ever. There will be no rest day or night for those who worship the beast and its image, or for anyone who receives the mark of its name. And then in Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, something similar has been said, which is, And God said, Let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years, and there will be signs in the sun in the moon and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Now in these verses, the moon, the stars and the sun are used as signs in season, and is even said by Jesus himself that they'll be used near the end times due to certain reasons. This also gives us something to look into when the United States, within the time period of seven years, has three solar eclipses, one after the other. On August 21st, 2017, there was a great solar eclipse of all time that extended over the whole nation.
Monday, August 21st, 2017. Right now. Not only that, but right after seven years to the event, on April 28th, 2024, there will be another total solar eclipse that is thought to mark an X right across the nation of the United States. Now this does sound like it has some sort of prophetic significance, as well as the fact that it will take place just a few months before another total solar eclipse, which is thought to take place on October 14th, 2023, which is this year, and will cross the United States. And what is truly incredible about all of this is that both of these solar eclipses on their respective dates are going to be the origin of the new moon in Jerusalem that is on October 14th, 2023 and on April 8th, 2024. And also on April 8th, 2024 marks the beginning of a new day of the new month in the Hebrew calendar. Thus, it also indicates the marking of a brand new biblical year on that date. Luke chapter 21 verse 25 there will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. As followers of Christ, we can see that it's something that is confirmed by Jesus himself that there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars in the last days. Along with that, he also mentioned that there will be distress of nations. Talking about the distress of nations, we can see that Israel and Jerusalem are being an absolute center for what will take place in the last days. At this point, the distress that has been there for quite some time now is something to look up to when you look at a different biblical prophecies. Growing turmoil in Israel, fiery protests erupting in the streets tonight. This comes just hours after embattled Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu dismissed his defense minister. That cabinet member said he would not support Netanyahu's attempts to take power from the judiciary. The battle over Netanyahu's plans is now intensifying. And something similar is happening in the streets of France, which indicates another nation in distress. Suddenly street battles are normal in Nanterre. Riot police firing tear gas and protesters hurling rocks and fireworks back at them. This was the same square where 17-year-old Nael died on Tuesday morning, shot by the police. These clashes were loaded with fury and mistrust. The predicted suffering of Israel and other nations is one of the major aspects of biblical prophecy concerning the future of these people. Israel is contradictory in that the nation chosen for elevation and to be a special instrument of divine revelation should also be doomed to suffer more than any other nation on the planet. The hardships of Israel are the result of a fundamental confrontation between divine purpose and demonic opposition. Because God chose Israel as a specific instrument of divine revelation, the country is the target of special satanic attack. Satanic hate of the seed of Abraham manifests itself from the beginning of God's interactions with Abraham and continues throughout human history, culminating in the millenniums and rebellion. Today's significant world events may be viewed as a precursor to the culmination, which will include Israel's time of suffering. As heartbreaking as it is to consider, the people of Israel who are returning to their old land are putting themselves in the path of this coming whirlwind that will destroy the majority of those who live in Palestine. The scouring and refining fire of divine judgment will develop in Israel something that does not exist now, a genuine repentance and enthusiastic anticipation of the arrival of their Messiah. Following the tribulation era will be Israel's day of glory. These events are crucial for Christians because many scriptures appear to teach that Christ will come for the church and the body of saints in this present era of grace before these end time events occur. The translation of the church and the resurrection of the dead in Christ will precede Israel's day of tribulation. Our generation's fast-paced events are not cause for despair, but rather a reminder that God majestically fulfills His will. Every prophecy will be completely fulfilled and God's wisdom, mercy, and sovereignty will be vindicated in front of all his creatures. Christ is not simply Israel's hope, but the hope of all who believe in him. And now the events that are happening right in front of our very eyes are a clear indication of what the world in the end times will look like. It's not going to be something that will happen all of a sudden, but all of these will be built up to that very point, And it's like that's what we are getting a glimpse of right now. However, these events are something which are indicated by Jesus himself. Matthew chapter 24, verse 6. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. 
We should be prepared for everything that could possibly happen. But we don't have to be afraid, as God is with us. The prophecies are here to tell us about the future right now, and it's pretty evident that we're getting a glimpse of that prophetic future. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. With that, we'll end our video here. Let us know your thoughts on this in the comments below. If you enjoyed today's video, then make sure to like the video and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to keep up with the most amazing content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.